Hey everybody, welcome to The Percussioner. I'm gonna give you a little rundown of how we set up the percussion for the movies we do. I'm backstage here at the Aatea Center. You can kind of see, it's a little bit dark back here. Everybody's getting ready for our show tonight. And tonight we're gonna be playing um, How to Train Your Dragon. And the movie thing has been quite popular the last few years. Orchestra's performing a live concert of the soundtrack along with the movie. And I'm just gonna give you a little insight into how it works for us. Um, and I'll start with this massive preface that everybody's situation is different. And I hopefully I explain that a little bit when we're going through this. You've gotta to work to your circumstances. Um, but the one rule that I think is important to take away is that we're not trying to replicate the soundtrack or the recording of the soundtrack. What we're trying to do is create a live performance of the music and that the audience is here to see the orchestra as well as the movie. And we're trying to display that. So a lot of the decisions we make musically will affect um, what the audience hears. So I think don't, don't listen to the soundtrack and think that you're gonna replicate it. You have no idea their situation. Um, it's a good little baseline to understand what you're trying to do, but uh, make, make some fun decisions for yourself. All right, so basically how it all begins, let's look through here. Um, I get the score, and as you can imagine, the score, I don't know if you can see it, here we go. How to Train Your Dragon, there's the proper score. Um, I go through and I try to figure out how we can make it work with the number of players that my orchestra has assigned me. And in this case, they gave me five percussionists and I got all the way through it and realized I couldn't do it with five. So I, I went back and begged them to let me hire a sixth player. So we're doing this with timpani plus six, so seven in total. And I go through, label everything, um, go through and figure out what everybody's gonna play, do part assignments like this. And in general, I try to set up stations. We try to eliminate running back and forth if we can. We typically can't, there has to be some kind of running. Um, but if we can typically get an idea of a good station. So from my perspective, we start over here. Obviously Temps, he's all by himself. He's just doing Temps the whole time and he's got plenty of Temp notes to deal with. Um, next, I put the bass drum right next to the Temps. Pretty standard, um, just for that sound and for the times they play together. The bass drum in this particular score is super important um, because we're doing this without a click track. You may notice actually, you check this out, we've got um, these battery packs, um, which are just monitors. Some people ask if we've got a click track going, but we typically don't actually. I think, I can't imagine any time I've done it with an actual click. It's actually too difficult, unless you were to have the entire orchestra on a click, it's better to not have a click and have a really great conductor that can push and pull as they need to with the movie. And we've got a great conductor, Vincent Hardiker. If you don't know that name, look it up, man. He's doing great stuff. And he's able to keep us right with the movie the whole time. And the percussion's got a big responsibility to stay with that. So we've got bass drum. As you can see, the bass drum's playing some tom-toms. We've got a bunch of different mounted tambourines and sleigh bells, all kinds of sounds. Cymbals, this is the next station. Cymbals, there's a tam-tam behind me. Uh, the next section, look at this, I have, dedicate an entire player to suspended cymbals. In movies, suspended cymbals can make a huge difference and you have to make suspended cymbal choices based on what's happening and there's got to be a lot of different ways to change it. If you're just running the same sort of suspended cymbal the entire time, it can get really uh, dull on the listener. They can start to hear that it's the same thing whether they know it or not. So definitely suspended cymbals needs to make lots of different sounds in movies. Next we have the drum section. Oh, I should show you this. This is great. This is called the water phone. The water phone is um, only used once in this entire movie. Um, I can't play it because I'm holding the camera, but maybe I'll demonstrate it at another time. But this thing's amazing. Quite an eerie sound. You hear it in a lot of films. Uh, next, look, we've got the drum section. So a lot of times the scores will indicate a type of drum. There would have been a negotiation somewhere along the lines in the recording with their percussionist of what equipment they had available or how they could get the sound that the composer was looking for. 
because sometimes um, the composers know kind of the sound, but they might not know how to describe it properly. And if you miss that conversation in the recording, then you might not make the same choice that they do. And that's okay. You have to make decisions again based on what you have and what's gonna sound good in your hall. So for instance, they've asked for a taiko drum and I've gone with this big Chinese tom-tom here. A, because I don't own a taiko drum. I could access a taiko drum, but we have to negotiate um, the financial aspects of those things, picking them up, bringing them here for what, you know two days performance. Sometimes it's not worth it for us. Um, and in this sense, this Chinese tom-tom -tom really does what I need to do. It's mainly rim clicks on the taiko. So it makes a really nice, strong rim click sound that we got to do for the film. Next, we have um, this frame drum. And in the score, he's just asked for a small tom-tom. But if you listen, there's quite this Celtic influence. And I think potentially the initial recording might have had a, a boron player, which is the Irish frame drum with the uh, wooden tipper, right? They play this thing. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. And nor do I have time to learn how to do it in between shows. So in this case, I've just set up a really nice minor little frame drum. I play it with sticks. And that's what you got to do sometimes as a percussionist. You just got to make things sound in the style of what you're doing. You don't necessarily have to be the world's greatest boron player. Um, we also have a darbuka. I play that with fingers and I play it with sticks at one point because it was too loud for me to play it with um, just my fingers. We've got several different snare drums. I don't know if you can see all these. I've got a five and a half inch black swamp titanium drum. And I got that for um, its ability to cut. I needed to cut through the orchestra so they can really hear. In the mix on the soundtracks, you'll notice that the snare drum is not as prevalent as it might be in a live situation. And that's because um, there are some responsibilities in a live setting to make sure that the, the rhythm is communicated quite clearly. So sometimes I probably play a little bit louder than um, what comes out on the mix of a soundtrack. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud. If, I, if it is too loud, my colleagues will let me know. Um, yeah, next I've got a kick drum. So I'm playing a little bit of kick and snare drum at the same time. I've got a much smaller drum. This is my little four inch brass pearl. And I use this for a lot of this more softer, delicate stuff. And also just to change timbres. Again, it's quite nice in a two hour film or an hour and 45 minute film to change color when you can, if, it's, if the music warrants it. Anytime you can change that character, even the slightest color change can help a piece feel a little bit different and help just change the mood. Those are some of the artistic decisions we get to make. Got a whole range of toms. We've got this awesome Scottish pipe band drum. Again, that Celtic influence comes in. There's quite a bit of um, pipe band drumming happening going on in the music. So we got a, a legit um, pipe band drum. There's like a shocking amount of pipe bands in New Zealand. So this was not hard to find or access. Um, I've got my Rogers Dynasonic field drum, which also we just turn off the snares and that's our tenor drum as well. Tenor drum again only occurs like once in the whole piece. So there was no need to set up an entire drum. Sometimes those are decisions you got to make. Um, do you have enough room for all of this stuff? Um, next we got our Glock Arcritales. You can see on down, it gets pretty dark over there. So I'm not going to go all the way over there. Marimba, maybe you can see all this stuff. Got some extra sound effects that these guys got to do occasionally. Um, I've got to find people to do something at all times. Vibraphone, Tam Tam, we got the anvil down there and the chimes. Um, one thing, another decision we had to make, the xylophone. Xylophone occurs in this score for one measure and there was no way I could, as you can see, I'm already stocked up here on equipment. So there's no way I could put a xylophone up here. So the one measure of xylophone, we're playing with hard mallets on a marimba up at the high octave. And sometimes you got to make those decisions. We did really well with six percussionists and timpani. There are only three glockenspiel notes that I'm leaving out. That's the only thing I'm missing out of this entire score. If you can find it, then um, yeah, I'll give you a free dinner. So anyways, 
I think that's a pretty good um, synopsis of what we got going on here. Uh, here comes Lenny Sakofsky, who is the bass drummer tonight. Lenny, do you want to come and say hello? Yeah, come on up, man. I'm just giving everybody a little tutorial of what it means to do a... Um... There he is. What it means to do a film and how we just had to make decisions based on the equipment that we have yeah. or the hall that we're in and mm. that we're not here to replicate the recording of the soundtrack. You got any comments on that? What about you've got to do f films from time to time as well? Well, especially something like the bass drum, um, most of the film sounds you hear are amplified, they're compressed, and we just cannot uh, replicate anything like that. So we have to try our best to try and make the tra a drum sound big um, and really resonant and uh, just try to match all of the voices and the sound effects and so yeah we have to do what we can to yeah you know for sure you may notice actually uh, i didn't mention the microphones so we are mic'd up it's not like everything's individually mic'd up i mean the bass drum does have its own yeah. microphone yeah. which is fantastic we have the um terrific adrian holly out down there doing all the mixing and stuff hey adrian yeah, can you see Adrian waving back there? So Adrian is doing the mixing and yeah, he's got lots of mics set up. So we have to just trust that he's doing his job out there and tells us when we can play loud or when we can play quiet. And anyways, we're just trying to keep it all together most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're doing a good job, but. Yeah, 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 we totally are. Anyways, that's me. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. And um, yeah, that's us. Yeah. Talk to you later. See ya. See ya.